Hello everyone, uh, welcome to this new video. Uh, this video uh, series of videos will explain uh, some uh, bases uh, obstetrics and gynecology, internal medicine, surgery, and pediatrics. Before I uh, explain them, um, I want to explain to you how you can get these bases for free. They are the most updated bases for crop questions and they will help you a lot in. Uh, studying subject wise so only subjects uh, if you uh, want to start with this so you go to crocology.com which is the website i recommend for studying for croc 2 and you go to english medicine then croc 2 then go to the after you make of course a free account and then uh, you go to the subject section again and then you can choose uh, the subject you want uh, to practice so for example obstetrics and gynecology next and then you can uh, practice about 400 only gynecology questions most updated to the latest um, year of um, booklets um, like um, like previous uh, bases have had in this feature so um, make sure to uh, take advantage of this feature and uh, let's start the explanation so first uh, uh, base we have is obstetrics and gynecology we will explain 10 questions out of this base uh, here we have a 28 year old woman uh, has bursting pain in the lower abdomen during menstruation chocolate like discharges from the uh, vagina are observed and it's known from the anamnesis, the history of the disease, that the patient suffers from chronic adenoxitis. Uh, by manual examination, reveal a tumor-like formation of heterogeneous consistency on the left of the uterus, and the formation is a restrictly uh, movable, painful when removed. What is the most probable uh, diagnosis? Two things here we need to pay attention to. Uh, the chocolate-like discharges and the fact of a growth uh, left to the uterus. Uh, the chocolate discharges refer to the uh, chocolate cyst, which is um, as a result of um, growing um, cyst in the ovary. We will see what this means in a, in a second. And uh, as you can see in this picture, it's characterized by these dark brown discharges that they call it chocolate cyst. And this is a hemisection and how it looks like by, but what uh, forms uh, this cyst, this is called endometriosis. Endometriosis is a disease characterized by presence of endometrial glands outside the uterus. So endometrial glands normally should be only in the uterus, in the endometrium, of course. But when they form outside the uterus, as you can see in this picture, different places um, uh, on the bladder, the peritoneum, uh, and when they grow inside the uh, ovary, then the ovary, ovary, uh, this ovarian cyst called endometrial uh, cyst will form and will uh, have these uh, chocolate discharges. Here you can see in this table uh, the different locations of this cyst, uh, sorry, different locations of endometriosis can be ovary and the cervix and so on. And here, um, is the typical symptoms written for you and how to diagnose it in case of chocolate cyst diagnosed by laparoscopy for example so yes this is about endometriosis uh, of the ovary so the answer should be endometrial endometrioid cyst of the left ovary because we just if we uh, because of the mentioned symptoms and signs uh, next question we have is a 35 year old woman addressed a gynecological inpatient department the complaints of irregular pains in the hair lower abdomen which increase during menstruation and dark brown sticky discharge from the genital tracts on by manual examination the uterine uh, body is slightly enlarged and appendages are not palpated mirror examination of the uterine cervix reveals bluish spots so this is here the keyword, what diagnosis most likely. Um, so this is endometriosis, but of the cervix uh, of the uterus, right? So here, see this picture. Uh, this is here uh, 
the vagina and then here we have the cervix right this is the area of the cervix of the uterus and then we have if we have here these endometrial glands forming here then we call it endo cervical endometriosis and again if we um, enter with an um, instrument called colposcopy which is uh, instrument to um, used to in uh, to look at this area the cervix then we can see these dark bluish spots as seen here in the photo uh, in front of you so uh, back again endometriosis can be on different places and this is one of its places so that's why it's cervical endometriosis another question croc that comes is how to do it, diagnose do the, the diagnosis and this is back to the table is by colposcopy which is a special instrument to view the uh, cervix of the uterus also can be used in cervical cancer uh, diagnosis uh, next question we have a um, 30 year old parent woman was delivered to hospital with full-time pregnancy she complains of severe lacinating pain in the uterus that started one hour ago nausea vomiting and cold sweat anamnesis states cesarean section two years ago uh, two uterine contractions stopped skin and mucous membranes are pale heart rate is 100 per minute blood pressure is 90 over 60 uterus has no clear margins it's sharply painful no heartbeat can be auscultated in the fetus bloody discharge from the uterus presenting part is not visible most likely diagnosis is so here, uh, as you can see, this is what we call it obstetrical emergency. We see pain in the uterus, which is severe, and uh, <clears throat> and the uterine contractions which stopped uh, during labor. And the uterus has no clear margins when palpation. The uterus should has um, clear margins, but it has no clear margins. It means it lost its uh, borders. So these are all signs of the uterine rupture, as you can see here from the photo. Um, when the uterus uh, is like um, um, uh, there is a, a, an injury to it and this can happen when certain risk factors are present one of them is present in the question which is a prior uterine surgery if there was a previously on this uterus surgery for example cesarean section most commonly and there was a suture to close the uterus after cesarean section because during cesarean section you know we open the uterus to get the fetus outside uh, and then the uterus is closed again and sutured but of course in the second pre pregnancy this uh, place where the sutures uh, are is a uh, weak spot because with uh, the powerful contractions the uterus can rupture and this here mentioned the question she had cesarean section two years ago so this is a risk factor for uterine rupture if we come at the clinical picture in Croc, they will ask you about two uh, variants of this question. If there is threatened uterine rupture, so a uterine rupture that is about to happen, but it didn't happen, uh, and this will be characterized by just pain, um, but no rupture yet, but presence of the risk factors and everything else. But complete uterine rupture will have the uh, si uh, symptoms from the side of the mother and symptoms from the side of the fetus, from the side of the mother. There will be a signs of hemorrhagic shock because of loss of the blood. Uh, signs of blood in the peritoneal cavity, positive peritoneal signs. Stop of the uterine contractions. We have now a, a rupture uterine, which is non-functional. So there is no uterine contractions. And the, the uterus borders cannot be determined, which was also present in the question. Uh, from the side of the fetus, we will have uh, distress, so there will be hypoxia of the fetus um, and the bradycardia. Here in the questions, they said that the no heartbeat can be auscultated in the fetus because the fetus is right now um, also in a dangerous situation. So all of this means we have a uterine rupture. Next question we have is about a 26 year old woman has attended maternity center complaining of uh, her inability to become pregnant so infertility despite three years of regular sex life 
uh, examination reveal the following increase increased body weight male type pubic hair excessive pilosis of the thighs ovaries are dense and enlarged and basal body temperature is monophasic uh, most likely diagnosis is this is one of the also uh, repeated questions in croc uh, it's called polycystic ovarian syndrome other names for it are also steam living cell syndrome and ovarian it's, uh, sclerocystosis uh, it's a complex of signs and symptoms um, that affect uh, the woman and it's characterized by increased male sex hormones um, and ovarian dysfunction at the same time uh, so because of increased uh, sex hormones uh, male sex hormones like testosterone then we have male pattern of hair distribution hair citizen, uh, as you can see here in the picture right uh, obesity and irregular menstrual cycle uh, specifically there will be amenorrhea no menstruation uh, so uh, and this leads to infertility because uh, um, ability to be pregnant um, have to do with able being able to produce an ovium right from ovulation uh, so in case there is no menstrual cycle there is no ovium there is no ovium to combine with the sperm so there is infertility as in this uh, woman here in the question and this is due to unveiled on ovulation and in crow questions some other questions they tell you how you uh, determine that the cause of uh, infertility is an ovulation or no ovulation in women uh, this is uh, by monophasic body temperature they said it here in the question again because uh, why because uh, during menstrual cycle there is change of the temperature uh, during uh, ovulation so the temperature in normal menstrual cycle should be biphasic but in uh, an ovulation it will be monophasic it's like it stays the same it's a sign of no uh, ovulation so back to the question and here you can see diagnosis and treatment uh, for every um, question we have these kinds of tables uh, to explain the subject from all uh, angles then uh, back to the question we see infertility obesity um, hirsutism and monophasic body temperature so the answer here should be uh, ovarian sclerocystosis and the, 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 the disease has to do with the ovaries that the ovaries uh, also develop cysts inside of them as you can see filled with fluid that's why it's called polycystic ovarian syndrome that a cyst form inside of it okay it's one of the features of this disease so this is about it steam level has three names you can find in all crop questions so that's one of the things you should pay attention to while solving questions is that the same disease same question same signs and symptoms but it has different names and you may think that this is something different but it's the same next question is also a very common in uh, croc uh, a woman consulted a therapeutist about fatigue significant weight loss and weakness and loss of appetite uh, she has been having amenorrhea for eight months so again uh, no menstrual cycle uh, and uh, a year ago she born a full-time child hemorrhage during labor made up two liters she got blood and blood substitute transfusion what is the most probable diagnosis so um, the idea of this question is that the, uh, the events start from labor complicated labor complicated by bleeding postpartum hemorrhage after labor there is some complication during labor that the woman bleeds a lot because of this labor uh, because of this bleeding the blood pressure drops a lot this will cause less blood going to many places including the pituitary gland okay and what will happen to the pituitary gland it will undergo necrosis so because of no blood going to this pituitary gland this uh, pituitary gland will undergo necrosis and it will be non-functional as a result of this all the functions of pituitary gland will be defected and uh, as a result we will have less prolactin that the patient will suffer from uh, hypolactation she cannot breastfeed breastfeed uh, normally uh, adrenaline gland hormones will be decreased 
because it's controlled by the pituitary gland, FSH and LH, which are the sex hormones controlling the ovaries will be uh, decreased. That's why there will be no ovulation, uh, amenorrhea, because FSH and LH, they, um, they help in the uh, produc production of estrogen. So estrogen is not there, there is no ovulation. And uh, there will be hypothyroidism because of low uh, thyroid stimulating hormone. Uh, so a lot of things, as you can see, and they ask you always about amenorrhea that we found that the patient after eight months after this labor, complicated labor, she has no menstrual cycle because of a complicated um, uh, complication of labor, uh, massive bleeding like two liters. Then this is this disease called Sheehan syndrome. She had syndrome. And the table for this disease, uh, you can find it here. Uh, sometimes they call it in the questions in the 2023 booklet, they call it pituitary necrosis. It's the same thing. And uh, yes, one question group is about how to diagnose it, measure the FSH and LH called gonadotropin hormones. And the treatment also was in 2023 uh, booklet is to give glucocorticoids or hydrocortisone. They can uh, help uh, in the uh, recovery process and pituitary gland hormone replacement therapy, of course. And this is one of the also questions about uh, this um, topic. 30 months after the labor, again, amenorrhea. This patient suffers from amenorrhea 13 months after a labor. What happened in this labor? This labor was ended in cesarean section which resulted in blood loss at a rate of 2,000 milliliters. Again, complicated labor with massive hemorrhage. And then you can suspect, you need to diagnose Sheehan syndrome and then go to the next step, how to uh, make sure that this is Sheehan syndrome, estimation of the gonadotropin rate. Okay, pay attention to this question, it comes a lot. Uh, next question, we have a patient with uterine fibromyoma size up to eight to nine weeks of pregnancy, consulted a gynecologist about acute pain in the lower abdomen, and examination revealed positive symptoms of peritoneal irritation, leukocytosis, and uterus was enlarged up to eight, nine weeks of pregnancy, uh, one of which was mobile, extremely painful, appendages were not pul pulpable. That's the problem with the gynecology questions, that their language may be a little harder than other questions. But you need to um, pay attention to the important keyword. Appendages were not palpable, discharges were mucus coming in moderate amounts, and what is the treatment tactics? So this woman has a, a uterine fibromyoma, which is a cancer of the uh, smooth muscle cells in the uterus that leads to formation of such uh, fibroids called uh, benign tumors. Of the smooth muscle and these can get big as like um, a nine week pregnancy so they look like a uterus which is nine week of pregnancy and they can cause pain but when you see positive symptoms peritoneal irritation it means that there is a peritonitis okay and there is irritation of the peritoneum which is inflammation of the abdominal cavity and this means you should um, treated by laparotomy and urgent surgery. What I mean by this, peritonitis as a topic, it's inflammation of the abdominal cavity, the cavity surrounding um, the organs in the abdominal uh, uh, area, so surrounding the stomach, surrounding the, also the uterus and ovaries, and any problem in these organs that lead to um, the infection, inflammation, spreading the fluid from these organs Spreading into the peritoneum can cause peritonitis. You can see here the, uh, the causes of peritonitis, like appendicitis, complicated appendicitis, of course, perforation of peptic ulcer, and, uh, of course, uh, gynecologic and obstetric uh, complications. Uh, so, for example, salpingitis, inflammation of the fallopian tube, and so on. So here, what are the symptoms and signs that tell us there is peritonitis, when the patient suffers from pain of the abdomen, logically tenderness on palpation of the abdomen, look at this picture here, there is like distended abdomen and um, 
absence of abdominal breathing, muscle defense, Schutkin Bloomberg symptom, very important. Uh, this symptom means that there is um, tenderness of the abdomen and tense muscles. Uh, so these, when 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 these are present, these we call them positive symptoms of peritoneal irritation. Yes, and um, when you see in the question positive symptoms of peritoneal irritation, then you, you understand this is peritonitis, and uh, the treatment of peritonitis is mainly to open surgery to open the abdomen called laparotomy, like this, right? And to explore the area and see if there are, what is the cause, what is, where is the fluid, inflammatory fluid that's going there, and peritoneal drainage. So back to the question, uh, any time you see in the in crow questions, uh, peritoneal irritation size, you choose urgent surgery, laparotomy is indicated. Okay, next question, we have a woman has uh, the first labor stage and the pregnancy is full term and labor occurs every three minutes and lasts for 55 seconds. Uh, fetus presentation is polar, the head is pressed to the small pelvis entrance, heart rate is of 150, Vagi uh, vagina examination, uterus cervix smoothed out, mouth to the womb is 2 cm open, and etc. And they ask what is the la uh, stay, uh, labor stage is it? So as you can see, the, uh, the, the language of the question can be confusing, uh, but if they ask you uh, about the labor stage, um, then you look at the one thing, which is the size of the cervix opening. What I mean by this, um, we have three stages of labor. First stage of labor or delivery uh, is called uh, cervical dilation. So in order for the baby to get out, the fetus to get out, first we have to, to clear the way for him, right? And this is done by cervix that should be dilated in the cervix here and uh, before the start of labor or during the initial stages like closed or very uh, opened one two centimeters and then it, it opens okay it stays uh, it, um, it dilates and then at the, at the end of stage one it's completely dilated and then stage two can happen the baby can get outside when the baby get outside uh, completely then stage three starts and then which is extraction of the placenta so these are stages of labor stage one called cervical dilation stage two uh, fetus extraction right and uh, stage three it's placenta right so when they tell you about the mouth of the womb, they mean the cervic, cervix dilation, how much the cervix is dilated, okay, it's two centimeters, then you have to uh, have these numbers memorized. We have the cervix start at zero, okay, and reaches 10 centimeters, right? So at 10 centimeters, it's the the uh, favorable dilation uh, measurement for the fetus to get outside okay so the first stage is from 0 to 10 this is the first stage from 0 to 10 from 10 to delivery of the baby this is second stage and third stage delivery of the placenta so when they tell you we have two cervical dilation is two two centimeters mouth of the womb means this is here the womb which is where the fetus stays and this is its mouth like its way of saying the cervical opening right cervical opening so this is back to the idea of the language anyway uh, here we have two centimeters so you, you say this is the first stage so when we ha when we have we know that this is first, first stage uh, we need the first stage is divided into two uh, stages latent and active latent is from 0 to 6 centimeters and active is 6 to 10 centimeters so uh, 2 centimeters is 
actually latent phase of the first stage of the labor. So uh, labor stage um, questions are easy if you know the cervical dilation, how much is it, and you can solve them easily. Right? Okay. This here you can find the diagram about the different stages. Next, we have uh, in a maternity patient breastfeeding for 1.5 weeks has attended the doctor, so she has been uh, breastfeeding for the last uh, 1.5 weeks. She considered the onset of her disease, uh, breast engorgement, mammary glands are painful, and body temperature 36.6. Expression of breast milk is hindered. Uh, the most likely diagnosis is. So uh, this refers to question, um, uh, complications after labor. After labor, uh, there can be mastitis, which is inflammation of the breast. Okay. And this inflammation questions over the breast can like they, you, you get them a lot. Uh, but mastitis is mainly when it happens, they should all have increased temperature. Right? Fever. So, in order to choose mastitis, you should see that the temperature, there is fever, there is increase in temperature. But here we see that temperature is normal. So, the answer here is only not inflammation of the breast, but only uh, accumulation of milk inside the breast, okay, called lactostasis. And this leads to breast swelling or engorgement, as in the question, and painful due to accumulation of milk inside. No color, no skin color change. Like in mastitis, there will be some hyperemia and redness, and body temperature is normal. So that's why it's called lactostasis. Um, evident also expression of breast milk is reduced, so it means that there is some obstruction uh, preventing that from happening. So the next stage, if this is not treated, can be mastitis because this accumulating milk, if it's uh, infected by bacteria, bacteria will grow and cause mastitis. But right now, it's just lactostasis. This is the table about postpartum or uh, mastitis. Mastitis because of uh, breastfeeding. You can see fever, redness. You can see how it looks like here. There is change of the color. Uh, next, we have also this confusing question. Um, a 24-year-old primipara was hospitalized with complaints of discharge of the amniotic waters. The uterus is tonic on palpation. The position of the fetus is longitudinal and it's pressed with the head of the pel to the pelvic outlet. Palpation of the fetus is rhythmic, 140, auscultated. Oscult Cervix is 2.5 cm long, external opening is closed, light amniotic waters are discharged. Um, point out the correct component of the, your diagnosis. Okay, so this is we, for to solve this question, we need to know uh, also some knowledge about the stages of labor and some knowledge about uh, when the amniotic waters should be discharged. So, what are amniotic waters? These are the waters that surround the baby, right? Right here. And they are called uh, water membranes, amniotic waters. And during labor, they should uh, go outside. And then after that, the baby will go uh, as well during labor, right? But I'm saying during labor, right? So that's wh where the rupture of membranes should happen. So the timely discharge of the amniotic fluid is when okay during labor we just took that there are three stages of labor but when when, when exactly the ideal moment is during complete or near complete dilation of the cervix so 9 to 10 centimeters as we spoke when the cervix is like completely dilated then it makes room for this water to go outside and make uh, the uh, make the uterus uh, contractions more effective um, because it has to contract on less volume only the now it focus only to get the baby outside so this is the timely discharge but when we speak about early discharge of the amniotic fluid this is when there is not complete uh, uh, cervical dilation when we are speaking about four or five centimeters of cervical dilation and the rupture of membranes happened 
So we are in the first stage of labor, right? The time the discharge is when the second stage of labor. So okay, this can happen during the first stage. Um, we have antenatal discharge. This is from before the starting of labor, right? The cervix will be closed. And this was also one question. Uh, so you have to pay attention to it. So back to the question where they, where they say to us that uh, the external opening is closed. Okay, so what does this mean? The cervix of the uterus is 2.5 centimeters long. Pay attention. Uh, this is long. Okay, we, we, we are not focusing on this. We, we need how much is it the opening or the cervical dilation. This is what we need. Okay, if they tell us it's closed, then this is zero centimeters. It means what? It means that the labor did not start yet. Okay, we are not in the first stage. So this is not early discharge of amniotic fluid because this means that we are in the first stage of labor and the cervical is like four or five centimeters and it's not timely discharge of amniotic fluid because it means we have 10 centimeters dilation. The cervix is completely closed, okay? External opening is closed. That's why it's called antenatal discharge of amniotic fluid, right? It's before uh, the start of labor, we call it preliminary period. And we have late discharge and amniotomy uh, also uh, for other questions. Uh, during the dynamic observation of a battery uh, of a woman in the second stage of labor, it was registered that the fetal heart rate decreased to uh, 90 to 100 beats per minute and did not normalize after contractions. Um, the vaginal examinations revealed the a complete cervical dilation. Uh, the fetal head filling the entire posterior surface of the pubic symphysis and sacral hollow. The sagittal suture was in the anterior posterior diameter of the pelvic outlet, etc. What is your labor management? And here we need also um, this, yes, this piece of information. So these types of question will ask you to uh, plan the labor. When planning the labor, you should pay attention to what is the fetus uh, condition. Okay, uh, normal labor is due uh, is due uh, through the normal maternal passages, uh, through the cervix, and through the vagina, the fetus. Uh, can go outside. This is normal labor, uh, but we can have assisted labor, okay, uh, using cesarean section or using uh, forceps. As you can see here, forceps, cesarean section, incision with the abdomen to get the fetus outside. Of course, to use um, a method that is uh, not the normal, then you need to have indication. What is, what are these indications? Uh, one of them is that if the fetus condition is not uh, is dangerous, for example, if his uh, he has hypoxia. In this question, he has hypoxia. Uh, one of the signs of hypoxia: the fetus is decreased heart rate, <coughs> bradycardia. This fetus has bradycardia. Normal fetal heart rate is one twenty to one seventy, right? It's different than the normal uh, adult heart rate. So this is a sign of hypoxia of the fetus. And here we have indication for assisted labor. Okay. After that, uh, you need to choose that type of method you will uh, use. You have forceps or you have cesarean section. Uh, for this, you need to look at the <coughs> at the fetal head location and cervical dilation. Uh, we have an anatomy of the pelvis. This is called. Uh, this is a cross section of the pelvis, so I'm looking at it from the lateral side, and we have what's called here uh, this area. This is called lesser pelvis, right? This is from the red line to the green line, right? So from here to here. This is here called the lesser pelvis, everything inside. <clears throat> when the fetal uh, head reaches the outlet okay uh, so this is like the exit it's also called exit of the lesser pelvis this is the inlet of the lesser pelvis and this is called the outlet 
here in the refer to or exit then it means if the fetal head for example is here let's draw it this then it means like he's uh, at the finish line uh, to, so to say uh, he is uh, like here okay it's like he will he's very close to go outside uh, but he's hypoxic okay so we need to assist the labor to get him as fast as possible and to resuscitate him if, if it needed and if he has hypoxia treat him as fast as possible uh, but it's not logical here to use cesarean section because he's like at the last last part of the maternal passages um, and so what to do is to use forceps which are these instruments okay and they uh, wrap around the, uh, the head and they can extract the fetal head right we have two types of forceps you need to know in croc all the questions were about the outlet forceps they tell you that the fetal head is a pelvic outlet or pelvic floor it can be called this is can be called floor or exit when you see this word you can use outlet forceps or forceps minor another name for it cavity forceps if the fetus was in the cavity uh, the cavity of the uterus so this green line here but this wasn't mentioned in crop questions and of course another uh, condition that need to be present to use forceps is complete cervical dilation that we cannot even if the fetus is like at the last stage if the cervix is not completely dilated we cannot get him as the outside so this was present here in the question complete cervical dilation 10 centimeters and uh, the fetal head shouldn't be too big or the pelvis size should be normal when to use cesarean section this is when the baby be, uh, head will be here so uh, they will tell you that he is not yet uh, in the the, the, the the baby head didn't enter the inlet okay or it's pressed against the inlet they use this sentence it's pressed against the inlet the, the against the entrance to the lesser pelvis so it, it didn't yet enter the lesser pelvis so it means he is high in the uterus and in this case you can use a uh, cesarean section they can also tell you uh, that there is incomplete cervical dilation there is four or five centimeters cervical dilation it means that um, cesarean section is indicated in this case because he cannot uh, he is not yet in the pelvis and we cannot wait for him to go there he's hypoxic and you need to extract him as fast as possible and in this case you use a cesarean section so this is about the delivery methods in this case should be forceps minor or uh, outlet forceps because of what we explained last question we will uh, here you see about stages of labor again last question also important and confuses students is about a 10 week pregnant woman was admitted to the hospital for recurrent pain in the lower abdomen uh, bloody discharges from the genital tracts the problem developed after a case of upper respiratory tract infection this woman was registered for antenatal care <coughs> a speculum revealed cyanosis vaginal mucosa clean cervix open cervical canal discharging blood and blood clots the lower pole of gestational sac was present what should that should be chosen so um, also important question about abortion uh, about abortion this is a pregnant woman you will see a pregnant woman uh, to, to consider uh, some uh, pregnancy um, uh, the end of the pregnancy as abortion then it should be less than 24 weeks uh, pregnancy like 10 week pregnancy uh, there will be bleeding and lower abdominal pain um, so there can be a threatened threatened abortion so abortion that that is at risk the, the pregnancy is not lost but it's at risk okay like in the threatened uterine rupture it's not didn't happen but it can happen because we have a mild bleeding some pain okay but the cervix is closed or some question they tell it's less than two centimeters so here we, we have some bleeding going outside but the, the pregnancy is still there we need to do stabilize this pregnancy before it's lost 
uh, other questions will tell you that about abortion that happened already and this will have profuse bleeding so considerable amount of blood that will be lost um, the pain will be more uh, severe and the uh, abdominal size will decrease so uh, because of losing losing this pregnancy of course the woman will notice after this pain and so on that her abdomen decrease in size so it means uh, the uh, pregnancy is lost and the cervix will be open in order for this to happen the cervix will be more than two centimeters here as you can see here it's this diameter here at threatened is less than at open so uh, or at incomplete abortion okay so what is the tactics here that you should do in incomplete abortion uh, you should extract the fetus surgically in case it's not uh, like completely outside because any remnants of the fetus at stake can cause infection and this is done by uterine cartilage, suction cartilage. Uh, this is here the pregnancy that part of it stays, uh, incomplete abortion, and then through a vacuum, uh, the rest of the pregnancy is extracted. So back to the question, the, the tactics here. Here we see the uh, open cervical canal, right? So here we have open cervix. It means abortion uh, the lower pole of gestational sac this is uh, here the gestational sac means the sac that the, uh, the fetus was living in is present here it's like going outside so it's incomplete abortion and the text here is cartilage of the uterus so this was uh, about uh, the base of gynecology and as last, I want to announce our, about our course with Crocology that includes the explanation of Croc2 booklets the same way we explain these bases. So if you like these videos, make sure to check our course, which starts from January next year. And for more videos, make sure to follow this channel.